Good morning. I'd like to call to order the April 5th, 2018 business meeting and ask uh, Deputy County Administrator Laurel Butman to take a roll. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce Stephen Madcor, our County Council, who's with us today, and uh, Kevin Moss, who's our clerk for the board today, and welcome Paul Reynolds, Commissioner, Housing Authority Commissioner Paul Reynolds, who's with us for the Housing Authority portion of our agenda today, and the roll call. Commissioner Reynolds. Here. Uh, Commissioner Schrader. Here. Commissioner Fisher. Here. Commissioner Humberston. Here. Chair Bernard. Here. Please join me in Pledge of Allegiance. And with that, we will adjourn as the Board of County Commissioners and uh, convene as the Housing Authority for this next item. And again, uh, introducing Paul Reynolds. And Paul, how long have you been on the Housing, housing Authority? Oh, I think about six years. Six years. Well, welcome. And Thank the you. first item on the agenda is a consent agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chair. On today's consent agenda, we have Resolution 1928, Approval of the Housing Authority Annual Plan 2018 through 2019, Approval of a Professional Services Contract with PBS Environmental for On-Call Geotechnical Engineering Services, Approval of an Intergovernmental Agreement between the Housing Authority and Social Services for Case Management for Public Housing, Approval of an intergovernmental agreement between the Housing Authority and Social Services for Case Management for Housing Our Families program, and approval to apply for a grant through Metro's 2040 Community Planning and Development Funding Opportunity for Clackamas Heights Master Plan, and that concludes the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Do any commissioners wish to move an item from the Consent Agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. I move we approve the Housing Authority Consent Agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Housing uh, Authority Consent Agenda. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. And with that, we'll adjourn as the Housing Authority Board and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners. And we have two presentations today. Yes, we do. I'd like to invite Rod Cook from our Children, Youth, and Families Division up to do the first presentation on Child Abuse, Abuse Prevention Month. Thank you, Rod, for being here today. Thank you. Good morning, Chair Bernard and uh, Commissioners. For the record, my name is Rodney Cook. I'm the Director of the Children, Youth, and Families Division of Health, Housing, and Human Services. Today, we are here for, with four community partners to kick off April as Child Abuse Prevention Month. Preventing child abuse and neglect is a community responsibility that depends on involvement from people throughout the community. According to the 2017 Child Welfare Data Book, during 2017, DHS, that's the state, received 80,683 reports of suspected child abuse or neglect, an increase of 5.2% from the prior year. Of those, 43,976 reports were referred for investigation and a total of 7,063, that's 22%, were founded for abuse or neglect. In 2017, a total of 11,645 children spent at least one day in foster care. Throughout the state, neglect is the largest category of child abuse at 45.9%. As we learned at the pinwheel ceremony the other day, uh, on Tuesday, we had 511 substantiated cases right here in Clackamas County. Whether suffering neglect, harsh physical, physical punishment, threat of harm, sexual abuse, or psychological trauma, the children who survive carry the scars of their abuse for the rest of their lives. Research shows child abuse and neglect not only directly harm children, but also increases the likelihood of future risky behaviors such as criminal activities, substance abuse, academic failure, and health problems such as health disease and obesity. We know child maltreatment occurs when people find themselves in stressful situations. 
without community resources and don't know how to cope. The majority of child abuse cases stemmed from situations and conditions that can be preventable when community programs and systems are engaged and supportive. A community that cares about early childhood development, parental support, and maternal mental health, for instance, is a more likely to foster nurturing families and healthy children. We would like to recognize the effective abuse prevention programs in our community that have partnered together to create a continuum of services that support the county's goal of ensuring safe, healthy, and secure communities. Successful programs and initiatives in Clackamas County include Clackamas Branch Oregon Child Protective Services, Healthy Families of Clackamas County, the Children's Center, LifeWorks Relief Nursery, Clackamas Parenting Together, Safety First Supervised Visitation Program, a Safe Place Family Justice Center, the Clackamas County Multidisciplinary Team, which includes representatives from the Sheriff's Office, District Attorney, <laughs> Victims Assistance, Oregon Department of Human Services, and other county agencies. <coughs> Clackamas County Sheriff's Office Child Abuse and Domestic Violence Summit that's happening next week, uh, Children of Incarcerated Parents Program, the Early Learning Hub of Clackamas County, and court-appointed special advocates. And now we will hear from four of our community partners who take action every day to ensure safe, healthy, and secure communities. I'll have uh, Seth Lyons, uh, Oregon Department of Human Services, and Emily Robb from Healthy Families come to the podium first. Welcome, please introduce yourself. Morning, Chair and Commissioners. Uh, Seth Lyon with the Oregon Department of Human Services. I've been in, um, been in this job in Clackamas County for about six weeks now, so I've been very fortunate to um, uh, meet a lot of our partners and just getting started. I'm really excited uh, to be here. Um, I oversee the child welfare and self-sufficiency programs for uh, Clackamas County for, for Department of Human Services. And as we uh, talk about uh, Child Abuse Prevention Month, um, I think the prevention part of that needs to be a huge part of our conversation, and that's um, one of the reasons we value so much our partnership with Clackamas County um, and some of the other partners that you'll hear from this morning. Um, you know, as, as uh, Rod mentioned, um, uh, fortunately, abuse is a small percentage of what we end up seeing. Neglect and other uh, threats to children are what we see primarily, and that relates to other things that we know uh, we, we can work together on, addiction, um, housing instability, poverty, all things that we put resources into and you do as well. And so it's, it's that partnership to, to prevent the situations before we ever get the call and certainly um, to keep kids in care. And, and fortunately, you know, you can hear about the numbers statewide, uh, about this, you can hear about them in the county, and some of them are, you know, still going to be not acceptable to us. Um, at the same time, we're taking children into care at less than half of the statewide average, and that's really important uh, testimony. You see, you hear the number of reports. That's the work we do to prevent having to get kids into care and out of their families, and supporting children with their families upstream. Um, with our partners at schools and, and uh, in early childhood, really critical to solving this problem. It's not one we can do alone, and it's not uh, a problem that Child Protective Services can solve alone. Um, so we would just really appreciate you taking the time to put this on the agenda this morning. It really uh, speaks to the level of partnership we have. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, hi, my name is Emily Robb, and I am a home visitor with uh, Healthy Families. And um, Healthy Families, which was previously called um, Healthy Start, was first created by the Oregon legislator in um, 1993, and Clackamas was one of nine pilot sites. Um, now we are one of 16 programs um, statewide um, that make up Healthy Families Oregon. We are a home visiting program that is designed for, um, to support child abuse prevention, and we use research-based best, practi best practices um, and provide one-on-one -on -one parenting support um, to parents that face multiple stressors. Um, Healthy Families partners with BabyLink, um, local area hospitals, and community partners to offer resources and referral information um, from prenatal to birth um, all the way to age three. Um, 
Healthy Families goals is to enhance family functioning and promote positive parent-child interactions. Um, we do this with home visits by supporting parents um, in reading to their children um, and responding to um, infant and toddler's cues, um, child development education, postpartum depression and developmental screenings, um, connection to needed community resources, and the promotion of early literacy and, um, of course, school readiness activities. Um, if there's time, I have a story from one of our recent graduates. Please. Um, and she wrote um, about her time with one of our home visitors, whose name is Dawn. Um, Sarah wrote, I wanted a different relationship with my daughter than the one my parents had with me. In those first few visits, Dawn helped us think about what our wishes were for our new baby. We were also able to think about the values that are important to us as a family. One of the best activities we did was writing a letter to our daughter about how we wanted to be remembered as a parent. Three years later, I still keep the letters we wrote to her as a keepsake. I have learned through healthy families that you don't get to use physical punishment or call your kids names to get them to listen to you. I've learned different ways to be calm and the importance of getting on their level to show, um, to understand their emotions and to let her know that I get it. Um, I can show her that I understand and that she knows she can trust me because I am calm with her. Um, she also says, Dawn also brought information about self-care. Um, I never knew how important it is for me to take care of myself and how that actually makes me a better parent for my kids. Um, she says, um, to finish, she says, I have enjoyed having a healthy family's home visitor. We really didn't have anyone to tell us we were doing a good job. So having Dawn offer us that support and be our cheerleader for the past three years has been a really amazing experience. And that was from one of our recent graduates um, talking about her home visitor, Dawn. So well, thank you. you. Where do you get most of your ref referrals? Um, we get our referrals from um, from community partners like the home uh, health nurses, um, but the majority of them come from the Baby Link uh, office. And what they do is they visit all the new moms in Clackamas County um, at the hospital just after they've given birth, and they have a, a screening tool that they go through with the families. Um, and if the families come up with a lot of risk factors, they are offered um, a call from our program. And if we have space, then we're able to um, take them in. And um, our program requires us to start with a family um, prenatal up to 90 days old. So once they pass that window, then they can apply for um, early Head Start. But we really try to get with them um, as early as we possibly can. Yeah. How about you? Where do you get most of your referrals? Um, so obviously, we we you know get referrals through the hotline, um, and our number one source, um, not even close, is schools. <coughs> is what? Is schools? Okay. As I've been out on um, uh, visiting homes, I, I'm trying to remember if it's pro or parole or probation. I've never quite figured that out, but. And I've seen some things in homes that I thought were pretty shocking, and maybe it's just I've never been a parent, but, I mean, I, I remember once a three-year-old kid who, who I couldn't understand a thing uh, he was saying and thinking, you know, as a police officer, I mean, there's something wrong here. Uh, as a police, do our police officers refer uh, you know, to, for, or ask for services. In that case, if I were a police officer, I would have. And I think I did ask at the time, it was a few years ago, um, <clears throat> whether they were going to refer the child or the family. Uh, um, one of them was on parole or probation, and, and the night before, the police had visited him for a fight. And uh, I remember, uh, I mean, the, the impact on a kid uh, it's pretty dramatic when the police have to show up. Anyway, uh, that's what I was thinking. So, um, you know, we have we have a variety of mandatory reporters. Um, schools, obviously, are our number one, but law enforcement is um, a significant source of referrals as well, and we cross-report every case with law enforcement uh, where it's appropriate. So that's actually in statute to, to make sure that we cross-report so they see a uh, family they'll, that they're concerned about, they should be calling us actually in real time. 
uh, yeah. to make that report, and uh, often we go out together when yeah. it makes sense. Martha? Yeah, I just wanted to thank you for your work. I had an opportunity to um, go on a hospital visit as well as go in with um, an individual who was helping a, a new dad who was the, going to be the primary caretaker and how to, how to have those parenting skills. And it's a great program. Um, both of them are really great programs. The interesting thing to me that, uh, as everyone knows, my older daughter is in England with her two children. And this, um, they actually do these kinds of visits as a matter of course for everyone which it's part of their public health, it's part of their national health system that they do these kinds of follow-ups. And I often wish that we could do this for every new parent as well, for those who may be at risk, who maybe have to be taught some different skills to parent, as well as those who are probably gonna be just fine, so. You did mention, however, that we visit every we new do. parent in the hospital. Yeah, as much as we can. Um, <coughs> Sometimes we miss families who give birth on a like late Friday night and are gone by Sunday morning, but um, even those will typically call. Um, but yeah, we try to get to every birth um, that we can. That's great. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you. So we have thank you so much. Two more if that we have time for two more. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for being here. This is my first time in front of all of you, so it's nice to be here this morning. Um, I work with Family Stepping Stones a Relief Nursery at LifeWorks. Um, I've been there about a year. I am a classroom teacher. Um, I'm also a home visitor. So we provide services to children and families, um, birth to five. Um, we also provide mental health services to families who are seeking that. Um, our classroom, we consider it a therapeutic classroom, um, the focus being really fostering positive relationships, um, being keenly aware of the, the social emotional growth um, that the kids are going through with, at that age. Um, the classroom is two years old until five years old. <clears throat> um, to piggyback along with what was previously said, um, the home visiting model is one that is hugely important. It's really a great opportunity for us as home visitors um, to just do a lot of listening to what families, um, the multiple stressors that families do have going on in their lives, um, and then provide them with the resources and support that we can. Um, we partner with um, the Clackamas Hub, offering parenting classes um, and other community resources to, to offer support to families. Um, we also provide parenting classes on site as we get grants and have the money to do that. <clears throat> um, yeah, um, we, we get really, really positive feedback for families um, who just a lot are facing the, the daily stressors um, that come at them and are just really happy to have a place um, that they feel like they're being fully supported, um, listened to, um, and offered support at. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm still fairly new to the program, um, but it's been a wonderful um, experience for me, and, um, and I think that we're doing really And, and are you the relief nursery? I'm the relief nursery. Yes. So we used to previously just be family stepping stones on our own, and then yeah. in the past few years we've merged with LifeWorks. Um, where we offer, we can offer more mental health services to families and children. Yeah, um, at the Glads in Gladstone. In Gladstone, yeah. yep, we're right next to the Gladstone um, Center for Children and Families. Yeah. Um, and so myself, I, in addition to being a classroom teacher, I pair with one of our child and family uh, counselors um, who, if a child is given a mental health diagnosis and a treatment plan is put in place, I will do home visits specifically to work on the treatment plan that the kid, the child has in place. Um, to help support that child. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
Good morning. My name is Sarah Taggart, and I am the Prevention, Education, and Partnerships Manager for Children's Center. Um, this is my second time coming to visit you, and I'm really grateful to have this opportunity to share a little bit about what's happening at Children's Center and also to receive any of your questions about what's happening in the community um, around preventing child abuse. Um, as you probably all know, I think most of you have come to visit Children's Center. Um, we're the designated medical clinic for Clackamas County anytime time there are concerns of abuse or neglect. So children can be referred to us by any adult in the community, and we provide a full head-to-toe medical assessment for that child, as well as providing an opportunity for the child to speak with a specially trained interviewer um, about anything that's going on in their lives at that time. And then we work with our partners in law enforcement and also DHS and with um, the multidisciplinary team uh, to provide some recommendations to our partners about what we feel is in the best interest of the child and the family, and then support that family with um, connections to resources and other uh, services that might be of, of use to them and of support to them during probably the most difficult time in their lives. Um, so a, our primary mission is to provide those clinical services, that intervention service, but my job, I sometimes say, is the best one in the house because I actually get to go out and think about prevention and think about um, what we can do to get ahead of this issue in Clackamas County. And so I feel I'm here today to um, have a both and message. Yes, um, both and meaning that this month of uh, of basically honoring child abuse prevention. Um, it is a somber month and, and planting you know, 50, 511 pinwheels on Tuesday was a, a somber occasion representing each of the children that had experienced abuse in Clackamas County. <laughs> Uh, but the and part is that I'm also incredibly hopeful. Um, over the past two years, I've had an opportunity to meet many of our community partners, such as the, the friends who are here today uh, speaking with you, and see the amazing work that they're doing in the community to try to lay the groundwork with children and families that's actually going to be part of the process of ending and eliminating child abuse in Clackamas County. And so at Children's Center, we're really excited because we feel that we're at a moment in time when we are are having a national conversation about ending adverse childhood experiences and that we have an opportunity to bring um, our, fr our friends together, our colleagues together, our community together to be able to have that conversation with, with one another about what it would take to eliminate child abuse in Clackamas County. <coughs> so the first um, step in that is an event that we're hosting on April 12th with one of the national leaders of the adverse childhood um, uh, experiences movement uh, Dr. Nadine Burke Harris. And then following that this summer, we really do want to begin to engage the whole community in a discussion of what it would take to eliminate child abuse and neglect in Clackamas County. So we're really looking forward to that because that's our opportunity, not only to come together and assess what the situation is, but also to assess what's possible um, and to really think about solutions moving forward. So thank you very much for the opportunity to, to connect today. And also I look forward to um, to answering any questions you might have. I look forward to putting you out of business when there's no <laughs> longer abuse. That's our, that is our ultimate goal, and we know that even though we are making progress on some fronts, um, that it's a daily job, that all of the communication that it takes in order for a child to be seen at Children's Center is immense. It takes those cross-reports that are happening between law enforcement and DHS. It takes the communication with schools who are now beginning to look at what curricula they could implement in order to meet the new standards for teaching child abuse prevention in their classrooms. It takes all of those pieces. So we know we're making some progress, and I'm most hopeful about these relationships that we're building, <coughs> but ultimately we do want to be perhaps not out of business, but we do want to be working on the problem in a different way, or perhaps working on different problems that we've identified. Well, I, you know, I always, uh, when the Family Justice Center opened, uh, I wondered where these people went before. Well, they didn't. And uh, every year we have more and more visitors. And I think if, if anyone walks out into the, the honor circle out here and they see the 511 uh, pinwheels, they'll think, wow, you know, it, it's a lot, a lot we could do a lot better with. I mean, it's just like uh, folks who 
uh, commit crimes or mental health, if we work on that ahead of time, then we don't have the expense and the damage that occurs uh, when we just don't pay attention to it and end up uh, filling our jails and destroying people's lives. So, Ken? Yeah, I had a question, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> 511 seems awfully high. Is that, <clears throat> is it going up, going down? Uh, in either case, uh, what would you attribute that to? Um, that's a great question. So the, the 511 is the number of uh, founded cases in Clackamas County. Um, my understanding is that that is about is similar to what it was in the past, but our referrals are actually going up at Children's Center. Um, and so there's sort of an irony is we would like to see the number of referrals and the number of children seen at Children's Center going up in the anticipation that that number of founded cases will ultimately go down. So what we're trying to do is to gain as much um, uh, sort of community awareness so that folks are making those calls to DHS so children can be seen at Children's Center and ultimately bring that number of founded cases down. So essentially <clears throat> increased access is, and awareness is why the numbers are going up at this point in time. That would be my assumption. I would also defer to DHS because they know those numbers much more caref you know, much more closely in terms of the number of founded <coughs> cases. Um, oftentimes, <coughs> we don't even hear at Children's Center what happens with a case because we really are that third party that provides our own recommendations. And for privacy reasons, we may not actually know what occurs um, in the long run unless we're called back to testify in court. But yes. Um, and I think that the, you know, as we're increasing awareness, we're realizing that when you open the discussion and you begin to look around, it can become overwhelming. But, but um, really it is just a matter of the number of people that we can have out there talking about this issue and the number of partners that are available to us to be able to work together. So one of the things that we're looking at is, you know, if, if our, um, you know, if our budget needs to grow in order to increase the awareness that we're doing, that that ultimately is a good long-term investment. And most of those resources are coming from private donations. So part of our job right now is to really think about how we can create a sustainable funding model for Children's Center as well, so that we can build awareness and ultimately change our mission in some senses. Well, I think we all wanna remember that the earlier the intervention on, on, on a wide variety of things, not just child abuse, but uh, misbehavior uh, with kids at a, at a young age, um, uh, earlier that intervention, the less expensive it's gonna be in the long run. Right now, when you put somebody in a, in a prison, um, it's about seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 a year. You could send them to Harvard for that price. If you, if you, um, if you intervene sooner and prevent people from going to, to prison, you're just, just purely practicality, for, let alone the moral imperative, um, you're far ahead of the game. So. Absolutely. The CDC, uh, I think, has a, a statistic of $124 billion for, for a case of child um, adverse childhood experiences. So between the loss of productivity, the expense on incarceration, potentially um, the treatment of drug and alcohol addiction, um, any of the medical expenses, it really is a perfect, and the loss of, of the quality, <coughs> it, just that opportunity for that, um, that adult to live a, a healthy and, and um, productive life can also then become a generational issue. So if we think of one person, we're actually finding scientifically that the impacts of child abuse can be handed down um, from one generation to the next, not just by behavior, but also by genetics. So this is truly an expensive issue, and if we can get ahead of it, we can really make a profound difference. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great, you have a very tough job. I, politics can be difficult, but your job's got to be very, very challenging. I cannot imagine doing it. I've been to the Children's Center, uh, <laughs> and I've been to many events that have been put on by the Children's Center, and I just find it extremely challenging um, that you can do the job at all. But thank you for your work. And Commissioner Schrader. Yeah, I just want to mention that um, this all was an idea. I was, remember uh, going to Providence Hospital here with Rena Adamack and Scott, I believe it was Scott Parker at the time, and uh, it was Dr. <laughs> Diane Westcott, I believe, uh, and they were the founding folks that pulled this together. And I remember 
being one of the original board members, actually. Thank you. So that was before, and that was when it was right across the street from Providence in the old building. And it's a pleasure, after all these years, to see how it's grown, because it was just was just kind of an idea and I remember we struggled because we knew that child abuse was a tough conversation to have with people and then how would we raise awareness without you know tackling this real difficult uh, uh, conversation because a lot of times as, as uh, Chair Bernard said you know you can't even imagine some of the things that uh, children are exposed to and how they're treated. So glad to see it grow. Well, glad thank to you. see you do that. Thank you for creating it. Thank you. Thank you. So to close this out, um, I really do want to applaud the commissioners because three of the uh, programs that spoke of the four, you actually invest tax dollars into those programs to help uh, support their work. They all could use more money, and so <laughs> I'll put that out there. But. Uh, you are doing some strategic investments to help children on a real realistic way. So with that, uh, I'll end with this. Uh, we, we call upon all Clackamas County citizens to observe this month and every day by demonstrating our gratitude to those who work to keep our children safe and by taking action in their own communities to make them healthy places where children can grow and thrive. And thank you so much for your support in this effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the next item on the agenda is recognition <coughs> of uh, Public Health Week in Clackamas County. Yes, Don Emmer from Public Health is going to do our presentation. Before we do this, can I just, I'm going to have to take off because I'm speaking in an event at Lemon. Pardon? <laughs> so I wore these purposely for today because. Those are not ruby. They're not ruby, they're gold. Um, they're gold and bold. So in so, honor of Public Health Week, we have to be bold, right? I mean, every single day we have to show bold leadership in the work that we do. So I wore them in that honor. So um, thank you, Chair Bernard. Thank you, Commissioners, for allowing us to have some time on the agenda today. This is a really special week um, as we celebrate all of the great work that we do across the county, across H3S, the divisions, um, because we believe that every policy is a public health policy, and so everything that we do within H3S and working with all of our peers around H3S are public health policies. Um, my name is Dawn Emmerich. I'm the Director of Public Health. We do have some guests in the room that are here to support this recognition of the week. And um, before I kind of get started, you know, I think I want to kind of tell a little bit of a personal story. I think public health really impacts every single person every single day and you don't realize it. And when you do realize it, oftentimes that's associated with something bad, right? So we think of public health when there's an outbreak, if there's a hepatitis A outbreak or you know flu season comes around, that's when you start hearing about public health. But oftentimes public health is working every single day behind the scenes and sometimes that's why I have to wear the gold shoes because we have to show people that every single day we are doing really bold policy and bold work and we don't want anybody to ever forget that as we work behind the scenes. So a personal story for me, I've been a part of public health actually since I was a little child and I was a product of the public health system. Um, I was, my primary care provider was a health department primary care doctor. My dentist services as a child, my my braces came from public health dentists. So I've been a product of public health. It's very personal to me, and I understand personally how important it is when it impacts families. As a young mother, um, I was also a WIC recipient. So my first daughter was a WIC recipient daughter, um, and here's how important WIC is that public health administers across the country and here in Clackamas County. Um, young mother, didn't have a lot of support around me. I was using the WIC vouchers for my formula for my daughter, and I was um, very poor, and I was diluting her formula because I needed it to stretch. I didn't have enough money, nor were the vouchers for WIC really helping me with my formula. So I started diluting her formula. And when I would go to WIC, to get my vouchers. They would weigh my daughter 
and I noticed that she was not really gaining any weight and asked me, how am I feeding? What am I feeding? How often am I feeding? And it is at that point where they discovered that I was diluting the formula. Um, if it wasn't for that, and if it wasn't for public health, my daughter would not be entering her PhD program at the University of Maryland in a month. And so I thank public health every single day. And that is kind of full circle, that here I am the director of public health. Um, and it just makes me very, very proud. So my gold shoes, thank you. So um, a little bit again about sort of what we, what we do. Um, how many of you remember um, when it used to be okay to smoke on airplanes? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right? How many of you remember when it was okay to smoke in restaurants? That doesn't happen anymore because of public health. That's a public health policy that we fought for and had bold leadership and we did that. How many of you remember when we didn't have to use seatbelts? Now it's so natural. Like you get into your car, you put your seatbelts on. That's public health policy. We did that. Public health did that. Um, when you eat, when you pull something out of your refrigerator, out of your pantry, I know I do, and as I've gotten older, it's more important to me, I look at the label, right? We wanna see that label, we wanna see the nutritional <coughs> label. That's public health policy, that's us. Um, vaccinations, you know, so in 1883 in Michigan, 1883 is when the law passed where there was mandatory disease reporting. That happened in Michigan, now it's standard. We have an entire division of infectious disease control and prevention that does nothing but look at the reportable diseases to ensure that every one of you are safe. Um, in 1905, the Supreme Court upheld vaccinations, compulsory vaccinations, that it was required. It's a reasonable expectation that Americans get, vaccine, get, get vaccinated. And then more recently, here in Oregon, the public health modernization of House Bill 3100 that was passed in 2015 that allows us in public health here in Clackamas and across the state to modernize our public health system. While many other states are decreasing funding for public health and actually dismantling the very service that saves you and saves lives, Oregon decided to have bold leadership and invest in modernizing. And none of us would ever get in an airplane that had 1974 or 78 parts. We would never do it. But our public health system here in Oregon up until 2014 were operating under 1978 laws. And so I appreciate all of the government support that believes that public health is very necessary and we celebrate that this week. So in honor of and recognition of April 2nd through April 6th as Public Health Awareness Week, um, I want to recognize that we have, um, we can't do this by ourselves, so we have a really fabulous public health advisory committee. Um, that public health advisory committee is made up of um, stakeholders in the community as well as residents, so that, um, and we also try to be very careful to make sure that everyone in our health equity zones, those 10 health equity zones that we talk about all the time, um, that we want to make sure that we have representation on our advisory committee from all of those health equity zones. They advise the public health director and staff, convene the ethics committee. We actually go above and beyond and any policy or any type of um, um, provocative thing that we want to do, we can put that through an ethics deliberation to ensure that we are not going to cause any type of um, adverse effect or any kind of ethical situation and the decisions that we make as public health. We make recommendations, they make recommendations to assure alignment with public health goals, and they participate in community education and engagement. And we do have some members of our FAC here today. Your role, you play an important role, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you play a more important role by having more often Board of Health meetings just as you did with housing earlier, that you, you, you gaveled as the, as the housing authority. I'm really looking forward to seeing a more proactive engagement of actually doing some good Board of Health um, work as well. So your role as the Board of Health, you have a very important role. I mean, you would work with me and Dr. President that if we ever had, for goodness sake, if we ever had a, a quarantine situation, that you would be working with us as the Board of Health to help us guide that and to authorize that. If we had to isolate or quarantine as a result of an infectious disease, that's your role with us. 
So more to come around um, Board of Health County Commissioners. I hope I will be back to talk more about that. So the whole country is celebrating National Public Health Awareness Week this week. And the theme this year is building our future together. Um, we can't do this work without just by ourselves. We really do have to rely on so many people. So it's a great theme, building our future together. So achieving public health Achieving health requires all of these very um, strong strategic partnerships. Um, again, the medical community, education, transportation, housing. Housing policies are public health policies. They're public health policies. If you do not have adequate housing, health outcomes become dire. Um, and so everything that we do really involves public health policy. You also are very familiar, and you're gonna see more of this, hopefully coming up in May, um, the blueprint for healthy Clackamas. And if you remember, we did all of that community engagement that we so are so proud of. The community brought back those recommendations um, of what they saw were the needs of um, improving the health of Clackamas County. It's not our job to tell them that. It's our job to facilitate it and to get that information so that we can then have a vision, which is the blueprint for Healthy Clackamas. We also have some members of our blueprint that are here today to support us. That process involves an assessment of the community, the needs of the community. Then we create this blueprint, the strategy. And within that strategy, we have three subcommittees that are all community driven, every single one of them. We're just the facilitators. So again, it's not pushed down, it's not the government telling the community what they should do, it's the community telling us what, we should, um, what their needs are. Three subcommittees, access to health care and human services, culture of health, and healthy behaviors. These subcommittees have been working over the last four or five months identifying strategies and recommendations to move forward with our blueprint. You will see those recommendations coming up in May when we come back to you during a policy session. And then hopefully in June, you'll be able to approve that so that we can move on with implementation. And then finally, just to kind of give you an idea of, and I apologize, I have not been advancing this, the slides. Okay. I'm sorry. I Don't start over. I don't know over. Where, to, where to advance them. And I, I just want to quickly thank you for all of your hard work. I have a, uh, a workforce meaning I have to get to at 11, but I, you have been a breath, absolutely a total breath of fresh air with oh, this. It's been wonderful. The work that you've done <coughs> and how you've engaged the community and, and helping with these equity zones. Yeah, we, I wish we could clone you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and colleagues, I apologize, but I know you'll... We can handle it. I know you can handle well, it. Well, thank you. Well, thank thank you. you, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, I have just two slides left. So these are, um, this, this particular slide is just again, I, I also just want to mention to you when I talk about public health modernization and how the state of Oregon has really put an investment into um, really doing public health differently, I want to just brag a little bit and tell you that Clackamas County is the only county in the state of Oregon as a result of that that have completely restructured our organization. We've been over the 18 months have completely reorged and we reorganized so that we would be in compliance with public health modernization, and the entire country is taking notice. Philip and I and myself were doing national webinars because people are really hungry to look at what a modernized system looks like. And I'm just so proud of the work that all of our staff have done. It's very hard, change is hard. And to, to do a complete overhaul, especially within a government environment, has been a tremendous success. So, be very proud of that. Access to care, infectious disease control prevention, vital statistics, environmental health, and healthy, clean, and safe places. This is what we do every single day. And then we also have the Center for Public <coughs> Health Advancement. This is new. This is part of our restructuring. It is its own department with staff, new staff that have been shifted, not new hires, but staff that have been shifted through the reorganization to focus on what we call, or what modernization calls, um, foundational capabilities. What that means is everything that's listed on that slide, to be a modernized public health entity, every single employee, every single program should be competent in all of those items. The Center for Public Health Advancement is almost like a mini consulting firm within our division. And they are responsible to work with all of our programs areas to make sure that all of them have that competency that's listed there. 
this is what gets people excited around our country because no one's doing it this way and they really wanna replicate it. And so again, we're very proud of it. So again, just in, um, in recognition of all of the public health champions that are here, every single one of you um, is a champion as well, and we could not do this work without you, couldn't do it without all of your support as well. So um, thank you to all of the public health members and FAC members and Blueprint members that, that came here this morning to support it, so. Well, thank you. Thank you. Ken. Yeah, I wanted to add um, one public health uh, um, change to your list uh -huh. and a personal story. Um, motorcycle helmets. Yes, I had that down here. And yes. I, I will tell you that I griped and complained about having to wear a motorcycle helmet. Um, and then I had three separate mo high-speed motorcycle crashes in which I cracked three helmets. I wouldn't be sitting here without those motorcycle helmets. Right. So, um, yeah, it pays off. It does. Thank you so much for that. I also remember... Uh, uh, People my age, uh, the the large lines going for uh, sugar cubes. I think it was polio. Uh, yep, I'm not sure. And then we all I'm had sure. those things on our arms that started here, or probably up here now. But uh, <coughs> yeah, there was. I remember yep. some big time in the county a few years ago when there was some, some H1. So you had H1N1, but yeah. then here we had just about two or three years ago we had hepatitis A. So we had an outbreak in hepatitis A that we had to surge against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, and one of the things I was going to mention at our retreat, we talked about uh, going to some of our advisory groups. So please invite uh, one of us or all of us, and one of us will try to get there, especially maybe when those reports come in, yes. that we could come to that and, and um, be more aware of the work you do. Great. Well, we'll thank do. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was very, very educational, wasn't it? Uh, well, up uh, next is Citizen Communication and Les Poole. Good morning. Welcome. <coughs> Sitting there in that audience and listening to some of those numbers is eye-opening. And obviously I didn't come here to specifically talk on this subject, but I remember the presentation last year, and if you drill down, as Commissioner Savas would say if he were here, you find that there's a lot of folks that aren't ready to be parents that are parents. I don't know what the percentage of, of single folks with no means or no, no real skills to take that on are, and uh, when I became a parent, um, I was ready and I wasn't, but, but I, I grateful that I was much more ready than some of the folks some of the folks are today. And it's just symptomatic of, of some deeper problems, deeper concerns. And I do want to thank everyone that does that job. Uh, not easy. But it's all our job. I've sat here and I've listened to all the good things that the government and the county can do. But it, at the same time, the government and the county and, and everybody that's involved in this really needs to hold the citizens accountable. And what, when I say that, that means when Les Poole sees a problem, when Les Poole sees a young child that's beaten up on the other kids, or the only time you ever see the kid with his parents is when they scream at him from the apartment down the way that it's time for dinner. So there's a lot of, a lot of dysfunction that goes into, um, um, a society where we've got people that are just in no way really ready to take care of themselves, and here they are, parents. And, and once we have that, you know, obviously we have to deal with it, and uh, I do appreciate the efforts. I did want to mention a couple of things. One is, um, you probably all know I'm, I'm a real advocate for free speech. Um, I, I, I hope that citizens come down and ask reasonable questions. What could be more important? I really, really think that we're fortunate to have this microphone. And whether anyone agrees with me or doesn't, they're all welcome to come down and express their concerns. Um, last week, Chair Bernard mentioned that uh, at this point you've approved uh, some evening meetings once a quarter. And I appreciate that, and I'm sure other citizens do. Um, 
the ask or the request was one meeting a month, and, and uh, I'll follow up with the county and see if we can get there. Um, the interesting thing about April 5th, when I got up today, is, is I thought, April 5th? And then I remember that was the day when a close friend of mine's right to free speech was denied. And uh, that hasn't been forgotten. And hopefully sometime in the future, we'll, we'll hear an apology for that. Uh, the last mentioning thing I wanted to mention is that I do appreciate the follow-up uh, that we've been getting on the roads. And I did mention Jennings Avenue a couple of weeks ago. And I mentioned it as an example of the condition of the roads in general. But I noticed the other day that some of those darn potholes were patched, so I do appreciate uh, the Transportation Department doing what they can. <coughs> uh, as always, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I encourage others to come down and, and express their concerns, and encourage the uh, commissioners to approve a one evening meeting a month. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the next item on the agenda is a previously approved land use issue. Yes, <clears throat> excuse me. We have Nate Boderman here to uh, talk with us about this comprehensive plan amendment for Parker Northwest Mining that was previously approved on March 7th. I believe this is the final approval. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, the item we have for you this morning is the approval or proposed approval of a board order which would implement your prior oral approval of a mining operation located at uh, South Highway 99 East and South Barlow Road just outside of uh, the city of Barlow. Specifically, this board order would approve three separate land use applications. It involves a comprehensive plan uh, change, a corresponding zone change along with the site plan review which would actually implement uh, the proposed mining operation. Um, now, I don't know if there's anything such as a straightforward mining application, uh, but if it were, I would submit that this would probably be it. <laughs> yeah, correct. Um, you'll recall <laughs> that this is a mining operation that's surrounded by um, other adjacent mining operations. They've been mining successfully in the area. There is no um, known opposition to this application. So uh, the Planning Commission conducted a public meeting on this matter January 22nd, 2018 and voted 8-0 to recommend approval to the board. Uh, then the board a couple weeks ago, March 7th I believe, voted 4-0 to approve uh, the proposal as proposed by staff and the Planning Commission. Um, so what we have for you is a board order that approves the three applications that I previously described. Uh, planning staff has included findings supporting that decision that was included in your materials. So with that, we're certainly uh, recommending approval of the order this morning and be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Great. Uh, any questions from the commissioners? I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the board order for a comprehensive plan amendment, zone map amendment, and site plan review request for a mining operation at the intersection of South Barlow Road and South Highway 99E as previously approved at the March 7, 2018 land use hearing. Second. It's been moved and second that we approve a board order for the comprehensive plan amendment, zoning map amendment, and site plan review request for mining operation at the intersection of South Barlow Road and South Highway 99E as previously approved at the March 7 land use hearing. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Staining? Hearing none, motion carries. Congratulations. And that one ought to be used, by the way, as the model for anybody else who ever applies for a mining application. And that was incredibly thorough. Except on her part, it took a lot of years. <laughs> but it was done the right way, that it is for sure. It was done the right way. Thank you. All right, so with that, we will... Uh, uh, please, uh, can I read the <coughs> consent agenda? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Under elected officials, we have approval of previous business meeting minutes. Under our Department of Technology Services, approval for a service level agreement, amendment number five between Clackamas County Broadband Exchange and Wave Broadband for dark fiber connection. Approval of a service level agreement, amendment number one between Clackamas Broadband Exchange and the City of Lake Oswego for dark fiber connections. Approval of a service level agreement, amendment number one between Clackamas Broadband Exchange and the City of Milwaukee for temporary fiber connection to the relocated Lending Library. Approval of a service 
level agreement amendment number one between Clackamas Broadband Exchange and Clackamas County Fire District number one for a new dark, dark fiber connection. Under County Council, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with Multnomah County for legal advice on technology re related procurement matters. Under our Department of Business and Community Services, approval of an amendment to the grant agreement between Clackamas County and the United States Forest Service for the Dump Stoppers Program. And finally, under Water Environment Services, approval of a service connection mortgage in the North Clackamas Service Area for Clackamas County Service District Number One. And that concludes our consent agenda. Thank you, Kevin. I'll entertain a motion. Oh, does anyone wish to uh, remove an item or comment on an item? Just a brief comment, Mr. Chairman. I just want to congratulate uh, Technology Services uh, on their continued outreach to other government agencies to provide uh, high-speed Internet services. Uh, that's saving hundreds of thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money as we do this. Uh, just, to, again, as a reminder, um, a company was going to charge the Colton School District $10,000 a month for this service. We charge $255 a month. That's a significant savings to our taxpayers, and it may not be the specific, you know, county taxpayer for our offices, but from the taxpayer's perspective, whether it's for the school district or a fire district or us or anybody else, it's taxpayer dollars, and if we can save them money, I think it's a good thing. Great. Thank you. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. <laughs> There's only three of us That's here. That's tight. <laughs> uh, it's been moved to approve the consent agenda. I, uh, I wanted to comment on something in there. I forget. <coughs> oh, so let me look. Oh, there was something in there I wanted to comment. Well, that's okay. We'll comment later. A lot of broadband stuff. That was good. Uh, nice to hear that. This is the last one, I think. Oh, Dump Stopper Program. The Dump Stopper Program, uh, uh, we basically go out into the forests and, and uh, clean up sites. Uh, we, we were not going to fund that a few years ago, and we found out a way to fund it, and it hasn't come up again since. So uh, I actually had an experience with the Dump Stoppers. Um, after I took over the business, I got a call from a detective and we took me out to a site where there were piles of tires with my name on it. <laughs> yeah. I had All to, your fault, is it? it? We sold those tires to a recycler and a recapper, and they sold them to somebody else, and they dumped them in the forest. But it was interesting. I mean, and the, the handwriting was a former employee who had died 10 years earlier. It, uh, those chalk... Um, wax chalk pens, uh, that stuff lasts forever. And, and, yeah, so and, did the tires. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. So uh, they actually, I think, they did the research and did find the, the company that did that years later. But uh, it's a great program. Well, with that, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Next up is county administrator updates. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just have a few items today. I'll be quick. Um, first, I'm happy to share that the county has received uh, gifts from the estate of Harold Thomas Theone. In his will, Mr. Theone left uh, $170,000 for Clackamas County Library. Wow. Uh, nothing clearer than that, but just Clackamas County Library, and also left a gift to the Clackamas Dogs Foundation. It's not often that the county gets gifts like this, uh, but we will certainly put them to good use. I'd like to th thank the late Mr. Theone for his philanthropic action and my condolences to his friends, family, and loved ones uh, for, my, uh, for this generous man. Um, and once again, more accolades for our Department of Transportation and Development staff. This time, our Building Services Permit staff received a big thank you from uh, for quality and, prompt, quality and prompt service from project management at Elemental Energy, which is a local solar design and installation firm. And what the company said was this. All of us at Elemental Energy, project management specifically, would like to extend a massive thank you for the hard work and time you put in to help us finish our permits, questions, and overall completion of our projects for the April deadline. We could not have been as successful in this massive rush without you. So thanks to Elemental Energy for the note, and thanks to our building services staff for continuing to demonstrate great customer service. 
And that concludes my comments. Great. Thank you very much. Ken, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to be brief today. Um, <clears throat> I had a meeting yesterday with um, Oregon Wild, Mayor Gamba, and the Center for S Sustainable Economy um, regarding sustainable forest practices and our cross-laminated timber project. Both indicated some interest in, um, in supporting us. Hopefully they will be signing uh, or presenting us with a letter of, of general support for our project as we go forward. Um, making the point again that what we leave behind in the forest will be every bit as important as anything that we take out and that going back to more aboriginal forests instead of monoculture plantings, um, that uh, is the kind of thing that they're looking for. Um, they were impressed with some of the things that we're doing on our own lands and uh, it's our intention to extend those practices uh, into the matrix lands if and when we get a pilot project going with the, with the uh, Federal Forest Service. So. It still moves ahead, uh, inexorably slower than I like, but we're getting there, slow but sure. <clears throat> On that note, uh, I will s switch over to the puppy. Uh, this is Merlin. He is an eight-year-old dachshund to beagle mix who tips the scales at 15 pounds. He is searching for his new home and people person. Could it be you? He's a social fellow who loves walking or going on walks, playing in the yard, getting attention and pets from all of his friends, snuggling with his favorite toys, and being around people. And he's hoping for an adult-only home. If you're looking for a great mix of active and chill, long walks, enjoying the sunshine and naps, come to dog services and ask to meet him. For, me, for more information about Merlin and other adoptable dogs, please contact Clackamas County Dog Services at 503-655-8628 or www.clackamas.us forward slash dogs. Thank you. Great. Commissioner Fisher. <coughs> I had a, the wonderful opportunity of working with our um, government and public affairs and doing an announcement thanking our volunteers in Clackamas County. And so I just want to reiterate how much we as a county depend on and appreciate those that help others we, um, we do a lot. Our volunteers are very engaged in helping deliver meals and helping folks with financial assistance in so many ways. It's so special. And as we work statewide with the Association of Oregon Counties and look at the big picture of how we want to move us forward with, with health and human services, I'm forever reminded of how very special Clackamas County is because of the work of our volunteers. I had a nice opportunity yesterday. I was out at Estacada Connects, and that is a, a group where social service agencies and individuals and community volunteers and faith, all different aspects of Estacada come together to brainstorm and problem solve how to better meet the needs of the community. And Lynn Deschler, who facilitates that group, um, her and I both had our birthdays yesterday. And it was kind of wonderful because we said, you know what, there isn't any place else we would rather be on our birthdays than with all of these wonderful um, community providers and volunteers in moving the community forward. Out in Estacada, some issues that came up, homelessness, keeping people fed, dealing with needle, possible needle exchange program in Estacada, and just looking at how to better serve the community. It was a wonderful conversation. And then lastly, I just wanna, um, we've seen the media reports of it being the anniversary of Martin Luther King's death yesterday. Because that is my birthday, I always am remembered remember Martin Luther King and the um, purpose and the passion beyond equity inclusion, and fairness. So I just want to end with um, a little bit of heart for that today. Well, thank you. And you uh, had the opportunity to go to a retreat yesterday during your birthday. <laughs> yes, uh, along with my fellow commissioners. Yes. And uh, this is a good example of why we have five commissioners. Uh, uh, Martha, by, by uh, law or by she has to be part of one of the boards. One commissioner has to be on, on that uh, workforce board. And sometimes we do that. And I have a forest trust lands that I'm a part of. And I believe that may happen on a Thursday mm -hmm. coming up, but I'll let you know. Um, I'm surprised, Ken, that you didn't mention the OSU extension building that we 
uh, had the opportunity to look at the plans of uh, and approve uh, uh, a, an amendment to the plan from 17,000 to 22,000 square feet and saw the picture of what uh, will probably be Clackamas County's first CLT building. Uh, what will be interesting is if we can actually use a piece of our forest that we own, which is about 3,000 acres, it, it fluctuates. I know we just sold some and we're getting some. Um, if we can actually take that out of the forest and have it processed in Clackamas County and actually build a building out of it, that would be really something and something we, we, we should follow. Yeah, it, anyway, it's, it was a beautiful building. It's lo it will be located just across the street here at the south north end of that lot. Uh, it's pretty exciting. It was a beautiful building. We also uh, agreed to on a Concord property uh, and library task force. So what are we going to do with the Concord property and what are we going to do with the library in Gladstone and uh, in uh, Oak Grove. Uh, that's great. We have uh, a, a number of groups working on that. Again, 511 pinwheels out in the circle of honor. Take a look. Uh, hope, hopefully that inspires you uh, to work harder to prevent child abuse uh, in Clackamas County. And uh, also uh, our government and public affairs. Do you guys remember the percentage of success we had? 92 or 94 percent. Yeah, it was over 90 yeah. percent. And uh, yeah, we have a, a great team uh, that works in Salem and here. Uh, that's a pretty uh, outstanding success rate, better than I think we've ever had in a short session. And all of us uh, uh, participated going down to Salem and, um, you know, making, uh, working with our folks to be successful. Um, with that, I have a, since Martha had to leave, I am going to uh, word of the week, which is aberration. Uh, diverging from a usual or expected course. Aberration refers to a usually temporary departure from what is normal or expected, kind of like today, you know. Did you know? Aberration originated in the late 1500s and is a Latin origin. The uh, example, I guess, is public notice that things were out of the ordinary in the library. They knew that this was an aberration from how libraries typically run. With that, um, have a great weekend and thank you for coming. We're adjourned. Mm -hmm.